Hello and welcome to another edition of Surviving Scientology Radio with your host Jeffrey Augustine. Today we have on with us a special guest, Robbie Olson, GOP political consultant who worked with Scientologist Joey Villa. Robbie, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much for having me on. Robbie, it's a pleasure to have you on. Your story is so very fascinating. You're a GOP political consultant and you have connections that are all the way to the White House. Yeah. So the Joy Villa story, people like me, Scientology critics, former members, everyone in, in this world was watching it with with a lot of uh, strong interest. Yeah, it was a, it was a fun time. Let me tell you, you know, she's a, she was a great gal. Uh, the wheels fell off kind of early on, which is good because, you know, we went a lot. We went we, I took her farther than uh, most candidates that uh, I've worked with. I had one I worked with that took her three and a half, four years to get the connections that we have. And we did this in four months. We know what's interesting, Robbie, by way of comparing notes, from my side of things I was watching, and I didn't know, you were like the unseen hand nobody knew about at the time, right? And uh, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> what was fascinating, because Joy is suddenly in a photo with Ivanka Trump, the president's daughter, and then she's in a photo with Steve Bannon. And I'm thinking... How is she getting these connections? Who's financing her? And I think there's a you know a multi-billion-dollar organization behind her. Yeah, a Madison uh, Madison Avenue public relations firm, right? It did seem well, that way, didn't it? Well, yeah, you're you're so good. That's what it looked like. And and Scientology is very aware of its PR, and you're aware of PR, you know, as is Joy. But what really happened? How did you initially reach out to Joy Villa? Well, the re- the way I I reached out after she wore the dress. Um, I had some uh, time that I needed to fill with uh, speaker engagement, so I booked her to come down to uh, Pima County, Tucson, to do a uh, speech with a girl named Jan Morgan, who's running currently for governor of uh, Arkansas. So that's how I actually met her. I booked her to, to sing, or to, uh, uh, I'm not sing, but give a speech and, you know, talk about her experiences wearing the dress and what happened with the fan base. And how how quickly did Scientology enter into the equation in your dealings with Joy? It, you know, I'll tell you what, it, it didn't have anything to do with it. I kept, you know, every once in a while somebody would say something like, you know, she's a Scientologist. And it just, you know, kind of flew over my head. You know, I grew up uh, in, a, in Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa. So I knew about uh, cults a little bit. I mean, I knew about uh, a couple different religions, but Scientology wasn't knocking on my door while I was at home. You know, uh, the people that were were the Mormons and the uh, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. So I studied those two religions, you know, and I could keep, uh, you know, I I kept the breast of what was going on and and what they believed, and and I knew more than they did. But Scientologists, they weren't knocking on my doors, and and it just wasn't something that was relative to me. It's not on my radar. It's just like it. You know, I knew Tom Cruise was, and, you know, I just, you know, whatever you hear, it's like it, it had no no bearing on what my thoughts were with her. So, you know, it just didn't mean anything to me at the point that point in time. What happened with me and, and almost everybody that I spoke with, you know, Joy has a, uh, such a, a, a great aura or great personality that when you meet her, that smile you know, just captures you. She's uh, she's a beautiful girl. She has a great, per- like I said, her personality is so bubbling that when, you know, somebody would say, uh, what's up with Scientology, uh, you wanted to believe her. You know, she would say, this is what her, and I've heard it from probably a dozen people that have called me since I came out with my story, and they said, you know what, I pulled her aside. She said the exact same thing to me. You know, this is what canned pitch was. It was, yes, I'm a Scientologist, but I'm a born-again Christian, and there's no problem with that, you know? I just used the tools that L. Ron Hubbard had to give me the confidence to get on stage, and I used it kind of like a Tom Hopkins or a uh, Tony Robbins uh, seminar to give me the the, the tools to to get on stage and and do what I do. And everybody would just look at her and they go, okay, I've done you know i want to believe that because she, she's just the charisma just you know oozes out of her she's beautiful christians by and large are, are very trusting people so you wouldn't really look critically at it it's especially to someone who you think has 
promise as a political candidate going into 2018. Right. Things that started not making sense, though, the way she would word things, you know, and being a Christian, you know that there's, you know, you're not in a religion. Calvary Chapel is not a religion. Calvary Chapel teaches you how to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, to be born again. And when she would get, get, be confronted with uh, this, I'd hear her flip off, and that's when I knew there was a problem. When she would say, what, you have a problem with my religion? Well, wait, what's your religion? I thought you had a relationship with Jesus Christ, who was your Lord and Savior, who died on the cross for your sin. So now you're telling me that you have a religion. What's that religion? Tell me about that. And that's when it, the wheel started falling off. And Robbie, I wanted to uh, add on to that for our non-Christian listeners, those who, who didn't grow up in a Christian tradition as we did. In Christianity, the emphasis is on having a relationship with God. And that's distinguished from from religion, which is considered a dead set of rules written by men. This is an important emphasis in Christianity, having a relationship with God. So therefore, someone who is presenting themselves as a Christian, but is talking about a religion, would be viewed with suspicion or even be looked at as an imposter because he or she would not be using the authentic language of Christianity, that is, having a relationship with God. Scientologists are expected to drop Christianity Buddhism, Judaism, yoga, whatever they're doing is as what's called an other practice. But they're also allowed to lie to the public, to use what's called a short story and an acceptable truth and claim to be something they're not in order to benefit the public relations of the Church of Scientology. So that's what she was withholding from you. Right. Well, not only did she withhold it, you know, she had this innocence about her which made you think that she just got in the car and doesn't know where it's going to go off that cliff yet. You know what I mean? In other words, it, hmm. it just looked, seemed like she was fresh in it and doesn't get it. And, uh, you know, when somebody would say something like you just said, you know, well, she, ha- she doesn't know about that yet. It's what you kind of get that impression. You know, are you with me? And so you want to believe the lie that she's perpetrating. You were told at one point that you had to do some Scientology courses or you should do some Scientology courses? Right. Uh, what happened is we came in late after uh, doing several interviews and uh, meetings with people. Uh, we, we pull up and, you know, she's living at the uh, Celebrity Center. Uh, I found out later that she's donated her and her husband over $250,000 to the Church of Scientology. She has nowhere to live. She lives at the Celebrity Center. Or when she goes to Florida, she lives at the Harris, what is it, the Harrison Hotel. Uh, the Fort Harrison, but, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Fort Harrison. So anyway, so I, we get there, and these people come out of the, about, you know, like down the hall, there's like five of them. They surround her, and they take her away, and they start doing like an interrogation with me. Two, two of them pulled me aside, and about four or five of them pulled her aside. And they took her away and started interrogating both of us, you know, trying to find out what we're doing. It, it was really a creepy feeling. So a little bit later, she comes out. She goes, listen, she goes, uh, I said, you know, I, I don't feel comfortable here. This is, you know, this is nonsense. You know, we're, we're adults. We're busy. Why do I have to answer this guy's questions? You know, what, what the hell's going on? And she said, well, you know, this is actually a religious resort, and uh, I need you to sign up for these classes uh, so you can stay here with me. And I said, uh, okay. So, um, and she goes, then she says, and by the way, you have to sign up for these classes because you can't work with me unless you become a Scientologist. <laughs> really? And I, I thought, yeah, I thought that was a little odd. I, you know, I, I'm not going to become a Scientologist. And so that kind of sparked my interest, and I started watching the videos that I could find, you know, the Lee Remy's and the, uh, um, I watched a few of the, you know, here's the thing. She wanted to, when we decided she was going to run, uh, she, want, she was thinking Clearwater would be a great place because she has a well, place there, which is at the Harris, uh, you know, Fort Harris. Yeah, the Fort Harris. Well, yeah. So I talked to Roger about it, and Roger Stone tells me, he goes, you know, that would be a big mistake. There's people outside protesting all the time. The local press would tear her up. It would not work. It wouldn't go over well. So I started looking into that, and he's absolutely right. You know, that when I told her that what I, what I just said, she says, uh, she goes, oh, that's just, you know, haters are going to hate and, you know, just kind of blew it off. I said, no, these people I love, they're, they're upset because their, their family members have been taken from them. They haven't seen them in years. You know, you need to wake up here. You know, let's, let's look at what, what the truth is. So then I found a place, the 27th district, and it fit better. It was in Miami. 
and everything made sense. She was real excited. She thought that would work. And, um, you know, Roger Stone was absolutely right. The, you know, the, the Preston uh, Clearwater would just tear them up. They, you know, they're out there uh, protesting all the time. As far as the control the church had, um, what happened is every time we would uh, have a meeting, whether it's with me or, or with Roger Stone or Steve Bannon, she would check in with them and tell them the results of what we discussed. It was really kind of creepy. What's really going on, Robbie, is that David Miscavige is getting reported to, and he, and when Joy gets pulled aside, it's by Sea Org members. You who are reporting to Miscavige. The enmity yeah. between the city of Clearwater and the Church of Scientology goes back to the early 70s. This history of, of bad blood between the church and Clearwater, Roger Stone is absolutely correct. He read that situation 100% correctly. Uh, the citizens of Clearwater do not like the Church of Scientology. That would have become an issue had Joy elected to look at running for Congress in that district. So right. you find her in Miami district. In the meantime, what's telling to me is that you're told you need to do Scientology courses. Right. That That's very typical of Scientology because their attitude is that you're coming from a lower level implanted thing called Christianity. We need to bring you up to our level. You're a, a born again Christian. You would never force anyone to read the Bible if, as a condition of working with you. Absolutely not. So when you you felt put upon, did it become a recurring issue, or did it become tension, or did Joy it, drop well, it? The, the, the actual tension actually, um, you know, I got I, I I think I even sent you a, a copy of the text messages where they're telling me to come and you know take these courses that she signed up and paid for, and. Um, but the tension wasn't from that. The tension was from from them feeding her uh, and and trying to micromanage after we, you know, Roger Stone and, and myself and and the group that I assembled to help her run for for Congress. They would undermine everything we did. You know, they would they would uh, pull her aside and they would uh, say, "You need to do this uh, video where the the two the two girls instead of you know think about this in order to." you know, sort of detract from, you know, the focus of, you know, you saw the real Vinnie James and a few people, you know, were hammering her on, on uh, Twitter, you know, and I told her, I said, look, don't, don't try and, um, uh, you know, pitch that you're a Christian anymore. You just, you can't convince people you are, obviously, because, and I don't even know, at that time I wasn't sure, you know, how bad this whole thing this whole situation was that I just got into. But I said, don't try to pitch people. I know you, you can't convince that you're a Christian. I spoke with a few people that were, um, that were great at persuading and did candidacies, and you just can't do it. You, know, you can't convince. So I said, here's the thing. I said, on the 2nd of December, I'm meeting with, uh, and I, I got you dialed in. We're going to meet with Franklin Graham at, at uh, Samaritan's First uh, Christmas Party. So I said, I want you to just show up and just all it's going to do, you know, it's not going to be an endorsement from him. It's going to be just let people think, here you are with Franklin. Let's just see how that works. Let, let's see what happens after that. And uh, she stood me up. The church apparently told her she couldn't come. Now wow. I'm thinking, it, yeah, she, she couldn't come to that. And this is what somebody told me. They said that uh, Greta, Greta Van Susfred, who is a Scientologist or was when she worked at Fox News, um, is now really good friends with Franklin Graham. In fact, they, they said, you know, she was with them at, uh, I guess, the Christmas party or something. Somebody has posted things on on uh, Twitter that shows, you know, him saying it was nice to see her husband at his, you know, 71st birthday or whatever it was. And so, you know, a friend of mine floated this one past me. He goes, well, maybe... Greta Van Susser had left the church, didn't say anything, and now she's a Christian and they didn't want to lose joy, so that's why he, she had to stand him up. Because this hmm. night, that's, that's, I mean, that, that would make perfect sense. Otherwise, it was a horrible move on her ha on her behalf to sh stand up Franklin Graham. You know, that's, I mean, he's the one who, if you ever go to a, a Donald Trump uh, rally, he's the one who opens up in prayer. I mean, what a better connection politically could I have given her? Yeah, and that doesn't make any any sense to stand up Franklin Graham, the the, the son of Billy Graham. As far as Greta Van Susteren and, and her 
husband, John Cole, I don't know where they stand in Scientology. Uh, right. There's a status, some, and, and this, so I would just be speculating to say that she'd become a Christian. I, I, I would have no way of knowing. Uh, I, I know. That was total yeah. speculation on my friend's part, too. But, sure. You know, we're try, we're, we were just trying to figure out what the heck happened. You know, yeah. and then, of course, you know it got worse. Uh, the last thing she did was uh, in December we were uh, supposed to sing and open for Donald Trump Jr. with 3,000 college kids at Turning Point USA's event. And she never showed at that one, too. Yeah, that, that's what was baffling to me, Robbie. Donald Trump Jr. is there at Turning Point USA, huge event in the GOP evangelical circles. Right. And she, she's a no-show, and she had been promoting it on Twitter. And she's a no-show. What, what, why did she tell you she couldn't go to that event? You know, that I'm still trying to... She just... I, I'd have to say she, there is no reason. Uh, we left, you know, we, we kept in contact on Twitter. By the way, during this period of time, I'm not allowed to talk to her. It's only on tweets or, or uh, text messages. She, she can't call me, and there's something going on. So she sneaks, maybe sneaks away, and then, you know, she's away from her husband or just kind of like is able to uh, uh, text me without him knowing or something because they had total control over at this point. And what happened is we both left. I left from Orange County at uh, 9 o'clock in the morning to go straight out to West Palm Beach to the event, and we were in touch, and she says, I'm at LAX, I'm at the airport, I'm on my way. And then instead of flying direct like she was supposed to, she ended up stopping at the Harrison Hotel, and then she never made it. Wow. Well, you know, just to, to give you some more background from, from my side of things, Joy Villa is in a church that has a, a, a department called the Office of Special Affairs, or OSA, as we call it. Okay. And they're responsible for the PR, legal and intelligence functions of the Church of Scientology. So when you hear about all this horrible, malicious, fair game Scientology engages in character assassination, I mean, and look, the Church of Scientology went after Leah Remini with a vengeance when she she did her 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 Emmy-winning show Scientology in the Aftermath on on right. Emmy. They went after Mike Rinder, who was the former number three man of the Church of Scientology. They've come after anyone who appeared on the show. They've gone after my wife, me, all down the row, right? Anyone right. who speaks out the attack. So the Office of Special Affairs would have been handling Joy Villa. With well, that explains, the, the, yes. that, that, that explains the guys that uh, hustled her off that a uh, couple times when I've been with her. Uh, they, they look like Secret Service with the wires coming out of their ears. Yeah, the, the, uh, this is what people don't understand. Scientology is, is sort of a psychopolitical organization. So the, the auditing is like the front end, but on the back end, it's very much about psychopolitics. They are in a war against psychiatry. <laughs> it's just, it's, yeah. This is one thing that makes it so fascinating is the deeper you go down to the Scientology rabbit hole, the more bizarre it becomes. So I'm watching uh, Vinnie James. And right. he did he did remark the real Vinnie James did remarkable work on Twitter warning people with the MAGA hashtag she's not a Christian. And mm -hmm. Justin Templer Senior, Scientology News, me, which by the way, Joy Villa blocked me on Twitter. She was talking about love and reaching out and inclusion, but I'm blocked, which I'm not surprised. Right. And, you know, I, I can see her tweets elsewhere. But um, the fact that she can only communicate to you through tweets means that she has a handler. That's what it suggests to me, that she has a handler. She's being monitored. The fact that she would stand up Franklin Graham and then Donald Trump Jr., that's breathtaking in someone who's supposed to be a political candidate considering a run for Congress. In Florida, and we were meeting in Florida, right down the street from, and she had a, you know what the sad thing is? She doesn't even know it, but I had somebody there from uh, uh, from Showtime that already has a show that's in process, and we were, we, she lost a, the making of a candidate is what the, they were going to name it. She lost that show that day. Wow. So... It goes even deeper, you know. My and it, it, it's just horrible, you know, that, that somebody would just lose everything as quick as she did. I just don't understand 
what what kind of you know seriously I don't understand the control that they had that would that would justify the takedown of one of their own like that. I mean, she just destroyed her life. Well, Scientology, yeah, you shouldn't be surprised. Um, or, or let me rephrase that, Robbie. To me, as a longtime Scientology critic, it's not surprising. If you remember what they, what when Tom Cruise uh, went on Matt Lauer's show in 2005 and attacked psychiatry, that, okay. okay, if you remember that infamous thing, and, and Matt Lauer did a brilliant piece of TV, and Tom said, no, Matt, stop being glib. You don't know the history of psychiatry. I do. Well, yeah. that made international news. Tom Cruise attacking Brooke Shields, attacking women's right to choose psychiatric mm-hmm. medications for postpartum depression. That was all orchestrated by Scientology. Scientology wow. can be very self-destructive. The fallout from that, and Tom's also bizarre showing uh, when he jumped on Oprah's couch and proclaimed his love for Katie Holmes. Yeah. Scientology's behind this behind the scenes pulling the strings on that. Uh, Sumner Redstone, who was then the, the, the CEO of Viacom, fired Tom Cruise and ordered him off the Paramount lot. And Scientology almost ruined Tom Cruise's movie career. He, he you know, he had to kind of uh, make do for a few years in the wilderness, if you will. According to what we've heard, they destroyed Tom Cruise's marriage to Nicole Kidman. They sabotaged that. Within Scientology, there's a thing called a knowledge report, and I think Christians listening will find this fascinating. In this so-called church, let's say if you and I were Scientologists and you did said something that I didn't think was right, I would write a knowledge report on you. Yeah, and rat I was, on them, basically. Yeah, it's a system of snitching. It's very st- <laughs> Stalinist <laughs> system of snitching. Of, I would yeah, write, I can. Yeah. Yeah. So Joy was probably probably sec checked when you told me that she had to go in for meetings she was probably being sec checked yeah asked if she had false purposes or if she was out to destroy the church of scientology or if she was out to harm its reputation because nothing nothing makes sense as you're telling me if, if you're really a true political candidate who's given unprecedented overnight access to meet with ivanka trump donald trump jr just go down the list right Right. If you're given that kind of unprecedented access, you some it would say, okay, Robbie, what else do I need to do? Thank you. And what else do I need to do? It's right. Like, let's get this campaign going. But right. she sounds like she's she's caught between a rock and a hard place where she's trying to be a candidate, but the church is fighting her behind the scenes. Yeah. Is that, well, is they that actually your... they were they weren't even fighting behind the scenes. They were doing it right out in public. Let me tell you a, a perfect example. Think about this. You know, uh, I've got the perfect team to make her a candidate. I've got Roger Stone. One, you know, he, he wrote a book for God, a book for God's sake that said the making of the of a, of a president. You know how mm-hmm. God, he's got a, a video that's out that um, that's going to win a, uh, an award. And it's called the making of the president. I got one of the best political consultants, and I've got Steve Bannon in the wings waiting to. That's all for it. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna take over. We're gonna win. You know, it's a great, great team of people I, I put together behind the scenes. That did, that didn't work for the uh, Church of Scientology. They had a guy in mind, and his name was Greg Mitchell. And Greg Mitchell, as I find out, has been taking money from the worst guy you could ever, as a, as a Republican conservative, conservative, the worst person, the worst name that could ever come up in a conversation is a guy named George Soros. And that's who this guy takes money from. And he also works for the Church of Scientology. Correct. He's she's their had, lobbyist. And she's had three or four meetings, and there's a gal she had to meet with. The, uh, to talk about, you know, whether she could even run for office. And this girl, you would recognize the name. It's Pat Herney. Oh, and yeah, yeah Pat little, Herney. Yeah. She's got that little PR at the end of her name. And I find out, you know, that I said to her, you got to stay away from this girl. If she is the best PR person the church can muster up, you're going to, you, you, this is horrible. She can't win an argument on a street corner with a, with a, uh, a guy with a Bible thumping on her. You know she she's horrible, and that's that's the best they can they can do. 
I, I told her, you need to watch those videos. And by that time, when I, when I straightened her out on that, and when I said to uh, Greg Mitchell, you need to bow out, uh, Greg, I told Greg, you said, I said, you know, is this true? Did you actually work with uh, uh, George Soros? He said, yes. I said, then do me a favor. Don't answer your phone anymore. Bow out of this. You're going to destroy everything that we've worked for. She will never make, make it in office. There's no way. You, you need to do the right thing. To him, the yeah. right thing was to report me to the Church of Scientology. And that's what you were talking about, how they snitch on people. Yeah, the knowledge reports. And they, they would, of course, get her on the uh, on the e-meter and do a security check. And they would say, you know, what has Robbie said to you? What has he done? And then they would want to know all about you. And they would likely, Office of Special Affairs would have done a background investigation on you to see if there was any dirt or anything that they could tell Joy, hey, Robbie did this in the past. You know, they, they assemble what's called a dead agent pack. They try right. To, oh, nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, it is. It, well, dead agent's a term where, where you, you know, you, you assassinate someone's character so that a Scientologist won't deal with them. Tony Ortega did a brilliant interview with you uh, earlier in January 2018 and, yeah. uh, when he broke the news of what was going on. And, and I really enjoyed Tony Ortega's piece on it and your conversation with him. I'm looking at Tony Ortega's blog, The Underground Bunker, and there's a picture of uh, Joy Villa with Kellyanne Conway handing a, a video to Nor, uh, of Norm, Navin, Norm Navinsky, uh, right. his, his video to Kellyanne Conway. And this is like a Tea Party video. Were you there in the room when she hands the video to well, Kellyanne Conway? Yeah, I was actually, um, uh, I was actually there, and I knew about the, the video because she was made, the, the Church of Scientology introduced her to the guy the day before, and that's why we actually showed up late for that party, by the way. We, I found out that she had to meet with him, watch the video, and they prepped her for, for what took place. And that's why I said, oh, my God. I said, what did you just do? And she goes, oh, you see, and I said, I know exactly. I said, what's going to happen when they, when they uh, uh, Google this guy's name and find out that he's donated $2 million to the Church of Scientology? You know, I, I said, Roger Stone. And see, Ben, and all of us, we said, keep this quiet, don't push it, and if somebody brings it up, you know, let's change the subject. Instead, you're, you're going out of your way to push the church. And that's not the only time she did that. I had a meeting with Milo Yiannopoulos. You, you might have heard that uh, radio interview. Oh, I did. Um, I, I enjoyed it very much. Yeah, Milo Yiannopoulos. Uh, was getting a lot of heat about the Scientology thing. At that point in time, we were supposed to have lunch with him. Uh, he canceled the meeting. He says, don't bring in that crazy Scientologist. I'm done. And I said, well, can you, know, can you do me a favor? You need to help me with this. I said, I would love to get her out of this whole thing. Uh, can we do a, uh, an intervention? I said, if she hears it from me, she's been hearing it because I've been hammering on her about how crazy uh, Pat Herney is, about how you know, everybody, and she's going to think that I just poisoned the well, and I, you know, I had control of the uh, meeting, and, I, and it's my fault. I said, I need your help here. So he goes, okay, bring her, and I'll talk to her. I said, great. So we show up. First thing out of her mouth is, I've got a friend that has a castle. You need to go. He's in England. His name, you know, and I'm going like, holy moly. <laughs> she already knew about this, this castle. This castle is, it's like a... It's a retreat, but it's actually a, it's like the people make comments, and I'm re- I, I read a bunch of them uh, off of TripAdvisor or what have you, and every one of them said something to the effect of this was the worst timeshare sale I've ever been. It's actually an indoctrination uh, station for Scientology. You know, it's a horrible place. If you want to go for a nice vacation, certainly don't go there. You know, it's so she, she tells she tells Milo about John Mappin's hotel. John Mappin's hotel castle, and he was going <laughs> to fly him in in a helicopter, and uh, and she doesn't do it once. She does it again, and he's looking at me because he already knows what's going on here, you know. Yeah. And she's trying to push this castle on him, and then before we leave, she does it again. So we we leave the lunch. We're on our way. We're in the, uh, the back of an Uber. She's in the back. I'm in the front seat. She's in the back seat with her husband. And she's on the phone with Moppin or Mappin, telling her how well it went, 
he loves me to death, and I'm in the front seat. I'm getting, don't bring that crazy Scientologist bitch back here again. <laughs> He's totally delusional. It was a, it was a classic. When I told Milo what happened, he was, he was chuckling. You know. Well, it, yeah, and it's, 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 go ahead. Oh, I was, I was, sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, Scientology can inculcate into a person very delusional beliefs. Like, for example, that they have power over the physical universe, that they're, I'll, I'll, I'll in, translate into maybe terms Christians can understand. Uh, you know the, the, no, the notion uh, that maybe um, in some Christian circles that, that you speak the word of faith and your whatever you say materializes in the physical universe? Yeah, like uh, name it and claim it. Yeah, name it and claim it, the prosperity gospel. And yeah. that comes out of maybe Kenneth Copeland's, maybe one of the leading people right, uh, right. who teaches that. And, and I'm not attacking that. I'm just simply saying Scientologists have an analog where they believe they can bring bring things into existence in the physical universe, like a congressional seat. Right. Never mind that you're trying to. Never mind that you're you're trying to actively sabotage Robbie Olson, Steve Bannon, Roger Stone. Never mind, you know, Milo. You're trying to pitch him to go travel over to a Scientology castle. Never mind all that. She thinks she's, you know, winning and going forward and is having a great time. And you're, meanwhile, you're, Milo is telling you never bring her around again. Exactly. So things are going from, would you say they're going from bad to worse? Um, absolutely. Absolutely. That, that's when the well, conversation is pretty much all ended and the, the last no show. And then uh, would you know, show that uh, at the uh, last event with uh, Donald Trump Jr., uh, everybody by that time, they were fed up with her. You know, they were counting on her to show uh, the, the Scientology part was just making sense now. The control, you know, nobody no, nobody in their right mind would have, would have no-showed for all those events that she did. You know what I'm saying? People oh, caught absolutely. on real quick. Yeah. So once they caught on, um, I ran into somebody that... Uh, you know, he, he was on staff with uh, Donald Trump for a while. I ran into him in the lobby, and he told me, he goes, I'll, I'll make sure she's never on Fox again. You know? Wow. This is, they were, they're angry at her for, for lying and deceiving and conning people. And, and that's not my word. You know, I'm not, it's not me sure. coming sideways because I'm upset. You know, I would love to see, her, you know, redemption here, and there is none. You know, there's no way to make this right right now. And uh, it's sad as can be. I mean, she's uh, she's on Twitter. I saw last week, last weekend, a couple of days ago. She she has no clue that she's lost everything, and it's embarrassing to see her out there trying to do the women's march. You know, everybody's done with her. It's yeah. just a pity. It's a pity. Yeah, you know, it's certainly it's certainly <laughs> typical of Scientology to to squander things. It begins at the top with David Miscavige. Some of the most talented people I've ever met, he personally destroyed and expelled from the church, declared them suppressive persons, right. locked them up in, in this rehabilitation project for Scientology had at one time uh, a, a system of ecclesiastical punishment where you amounted to be locked up, hard physical labor, sleep deprivation, screaming. I mean, they have squandered so much and continue to do so. A question for you, just in terms of the the, the uh, Federal Election Commission rules. Joy, is her exploratory committee still open? You know, as, as far as I know, uh, she's not going to be running. That's all I can say. You know, but nobody nobody in our camp has actually, you know, helped her do anything anymore. Uh, if she gets any advice, I'm I'm. Pretty sure it's going to be from Greg Mitchell. I think you better drop him a, a line. Find yeah, out might, from him. I might ring him up and ask him. As I understand it, Robbie, and correct me if I'm wrong, under campaign law, is there a point at which she has to say, yes, I'm running, or no, I'm yeah. not running? Right, exactly. And I've never had that information when she said she was running. Uh, I don't know who she dealt with to do all that. It was all through Greg Mitchell, so I don't know. You know, well, what's, it wasn't... What's we don't, you know, that's the thing. It was like all of a sudden when we got close to, to closing the deal, um, the communications quit. So I don't even know where where she stands on any of that. I have no idea. 
because she's not using any of the consultants that I, that I brought with, you know, to the party. She's using, uh, she's using, uh, the Greg Mitchell, uh, George Soros, uh, connection. Yeah, so I, I can't answer that question. Yeah, presumably. And, you know, just, just for me watching at the outside, when she first announces that she's testing the waters, that's a, a legal phrase in, in the right. Federal Election Commission. She she actually comes across to me as I'm watching it initially as district shopping. She doesn't right. normally normally uh, someone who's running for Congress will say, I'm running for Congress in this district where I've lived my whole life and I've worked in, you know, for 20 years and I've been a grassroots campaign organizer and, you know, whatever. Right. Right. She says, I'm looking around in California, Florida, and New York. Right. I'm thinking, well, wait a minute, because she says she has residences in those three places. Right. And then she makes a statement, I'm looking for which district can best use my talents. It's like, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Who is, well, like she, it, co yeah. it comes across wrong. It comes across to me as I'm looking for which district is lucky enough to have me as their Congress yeah. person, and I'm thinking it doesn't work like that. And then, right. And then I, you, you had made a statement that uh, when you were talking uh, to Milo, that you were told by Scientology Celebrity Center that they expected you to book Joy two speeches a week at five thousand dollars each. Right. And uh, th at which point I told him, I said, okay, so just to, just to, just, I gotta, gotta ask you, where did you come up with this? You know, and they just thought that that's the way we should do it because that's the way we need to make money. And I said, you know, I said, there's so many, so many, there's only so many clubs that you can speak to. They're once a month. There's only so many uh, events that are that are around the country, you know. And I've got a list of all those events, and some of them just don't fit the bill for what we're doing, you know. And I said, one of the biggest ones is a thing called CPAC. And everybody who's anybody goes to CPAC and they don't pay. So I'll, I'll scratch that one off our list, okay? And I said, oh, we just, man. yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll just scratch that off and we'll go with what, what your game plan is. I said, now there's another one we just did called the Hispanic 100 where we met several people that were in the White House with, that she met prior to, uh, to, to that event. And it also opened the doors and gave us more leads and contacts for future speeches. I said, now, we did that one for free, um, so I will never do that again. And I said, and how about, the, and I just gave her a list of, like, five or six events that, that we did. Okay, perfect example. Uh, how about when we went to the, uh, the Orange County uh, Republican Convention where we met Steve Bannon? That was our whole thing. But since we didn't get paid, let's take that off the list, too. Okay, so that was now, now we're worth, now we're not doing anything. There's no publicity. There's no public relations. Um, what you said just doesn't fit. We might get a couple of speaking engagements that'll pay that kind of money. But everything I did, I not only did I do it for free, we did it for free, and we got into the White House. And they don't, you know, that's we, we know what what kind of pull it took to get where I took her. And they wanted to try and micromanage it, and I told her, I said, you don't know what real life is. <laughs> no, I, I understand, and that that see, th this is a story. The Joy Villa story is a story of the Church of Scientology at odds with reality. And actually, Robbie, one of the frightening dark sides of the Church of Scientology is they believe that they are a master race called Homo Novus, the new man. And L. Ron Hubbard said that Scientologists, the new man, was a skyscraper higher than than Homo sapiens, and we we. Humans are called wogs by Scientologists. That's their derisive inside term, wogs. Yeah. Degraded beings. So you're running, it's interesting, Joy's, you know, in the middle between you being a hardcore political realist, GOP consultant, and Scientology, which has plans for world domination, but also wants to make a lot of money and wants to destroy psychiatry and wants Joy out earning money. And it's kind of like the two the, the two things are so unlike, and you're getting to uh, you are the man in the front row seat watching all this unfold, which is amazing. This story you should write a book, um, be, because I, I've never seen anything like it. But that's part of of Scientology these these things that does it, that can be so so um, at odds with reality. Yeah. And despite despite. Despite your best efforts to get her all the way 
to the level of Ivanka Trump, Fox News, and everywhere in the GOP political spectrum, Scientology still manages to destroy your best efforts. Yeah, it was it was sad. It it was just absolutely sad. She has so much potential. She she had the world on a platter if she would have just listened to our advice. We could have made it work. I really, you know, and, and but it's. I didn't believe that Church of Scientology had that much influence and control over her. And when it did, it destroyed her. When it all came out, that's what, what did it. Well, that's been the consistent testimony of people who have been through the machine called the Church of Scientology. It does control people, and it, it, it can destroy families, careers, reputations, wealth. It can certainly, it certainly bankrupted a lot of people. This development is very noteworthy uh, in, in the story of Scientology, because in some sense, Joy becomes another victim of the Church of Scientology. She doesn't uh, know that yet, though. That's what's sad. She doesn't know that she, she thinks that, you know, haters are haters, and it's all going to come back, and it's going to come back bigger. I'm sure she believes that. You remember the movie The Truman Show with Jim Carrey? Right. Okay, there's... In a lot of, I've, I've interviewed a lot of former Scientologists, high-ranking Sea Org members, public members, OTs, and there's always mm-hmm. a defining moment at which there's a crack in the Scientology snow globe world, a crack in the bubble, right? Wow. And I, and that's it's where like, what am I doing? I can't do this anymore. And it might be that they they're, they're bankrupt or they've been declared as suppressive or their family's been taken away from them. They, their friends can no longer speak to them because when you speak out against the Church of Scientology, if you're inside, you get declared a suppressive person. Everyone right. you know in your family, friends, everyone has to disconnect from you. So two, two things that stood out to me. Joy, even though you're working for her, is basically a volunteer, Right. Well, actually, I, mean, I was uh, I was supposed to be paid, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> pretty much like a volunteer. Yeah, well, yeah, you were you weren't given very much money. She posts a, you you put up a tweet where she sends you a text saying that you're no longer working for Joy Villa Productions. Right. I mean, did she fire you? Well, actually, uh, I quit. I think it was four or five days before that, and I think it was just her way of giving me a a little bit of a. Uh, a little bit of a warning that I signed that non-disclosure agreement. I think that's what that was about. So, you know what, at this point, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, it's more important to get the message out, what she did and what she's about. You know, the, what, it wasn't real specific as far as what it was. Most of the things I talk about, and it, like with Milo being solicited, with her giving the video, I mean, that's all stuff that's right there in the public view and it shows her doing it. So... You know? Oh, sure, sure, and that's why I, I yeah, exactly, and, you know. So, um, but yeah, so what are you going to, what, what, what am I, what am I saying that's not on the internet already? Well, exactly, and that's all I'm talking about are things that have been on Twitter. And right. for, for, for me also, it was an interesting thing to watch the power of Twitter shape, and you can see why President Trump uses it so effectively. Um it was interesting to watch this play on Twitter where Joy didn't have a good answer. She had canned responses. And she seemed, her Twittering seemed to be erratic. And part of it I attributed to the fact that the church's office of Scientology and Special Affairs was watching her tweets. Right. And so she had some very rocky shoals to navigate because there's no way she can please the Church of Scientology and please the Republican political establishment. Right. I mean, that, that, that's just, those those are like severe whitewater rapids to try to navigate. And so ultimately, we don't know what the church had in mind. But one, one thing I did want to, as we close out, one question I had, and this concerns Scientology Media Productions, the church's network. Right. Now, we, in, our, in our pre-interview, you told me that Joy wanted to push out her congressional run to 2020. Yeah, she said that she was going to use that. She said, why don't I wait till 2020 because uh, they're thinking that they're going to come out with like a, their own TVN uh, broadcasting company and they're going to try and they're going to have a, uh, uh, a bunch of family uh, type shows that they're going to produce and they're going to try and normalize Scientology. And by 2020, this is all going to be in effect and it's going to, then she could be happy, happily running in full water. And I told her, I said, 
if you think that that's going to happen in 2020, I said, we've got the Democrats on, on the edge right now. They're, they're, you know, we've got them, they're unbalanced. You know, they, they, they're about ready to fall off the bridge. We need to keep pushing right now. But in 2020, if you have people like Pat Herney who can't win an argument, if that's who you were counting on, you better really look into that again because it's just not going to happen. They can't win an argument on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, and it's embarrassing. And if you put your faith in that, you will lose. You, 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 there's not going to be a difference in 2020, trust me, I said to her. So that's why that's why that all gets back to them, and, and I, her husband asked me about it, and I said, I said that. I, I, absolutely, I said that. And I said, watch those videos. You tell me if she wins an argument. She does not win an argument. She just she gets a little push, pushy. She gets she gets a little in threatening to people, and it's it's just horrible. You cannot convince out of that box called Scientology, and it needs to be either she needs to step away from it, and that's going to be a tough one because she she would have to also get a divorce. So those two things probably will not happen, and she can't run because if she does. She's got somebody, she's a puppet, and the puppet master called the Church of Scientology controls everything that she would be voting on or making opinions on. That's yeah, that's a legitimate voting. concern. Yeah, that's a legitimate concern for voters, e- e- even whether she could win uh, the Republican primary to get to become the nominee is another question right. altogether as well. But the fact, you know, m- one of my feelings, Robbie, was that she was using her exploratory committee as a PR vehicle to build her own brand, that she wasn't a real serious congressional candidate. The fact that, that she mentions to you that Scientology Media Productions, their network, that opened in 2016. They bought the old KCET studio here in Los Angeles, and I think for $45 million, they didn't get the broadcast license, and they dumped tens of millions of dollars more into the studio. And it's yeah, produced well, you, basically nothing. Yeah. Yeah, you know more than I do about it, but that's, yeah. that's the lie that they fed her to try and get her to work with them. You know, it's, it's, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. But like I said, um, so when I made all the comments that you've heard that I've made to them, that made me, I guess, one of those SPs. I'm a suppressive person. That's why she can't talk to me anymore. The whole thing is just so crazy. You know, I've never seen anybody just lose everything. And I never expected. I was, what I was going to tell you is there is another video, that, the one that got me so angry that I did kind of come forward. It was the one where she did an interview with the Daily Caller. Halfway through the video, the girl questions her several times on the truth of Scientology. Okay, what she says is she says, she goes, I, you know, I don't push my church or my religion on anybody. That was a lie. She said I couldn't work for her unless I took those courses. Then she mm. says, I don't represent the Church of Scientology. Everybody has a, you know, that she, she, the first part was that, you know, everybody has a right to believe what they want to believe. That was the lie, too, you know, because obviously I had to take the classes and become a Scientologist to work for her. But she also lied when she said um, that uh, she doesn't represent the Church of Scientology. She has a booklet with her on the cover with the dress and it says something to the effect of the keys to happiness which is a publication printed up by the Church of Scientology well she does it's called the way to happiness and it's basically R. Ron Hubbard's rip off of the Ten Commandments with some other things thrown in like brush your teeth take care of your environment yeah everybody could watch that video and see the lies now that they've done that they've heard what you, you and I have just said you know and she just Amazing. straight up lies to the woman so, but the, it's a copy of the Ten Commandments you're saying. Well, it's a it's a rip off uh, of the Ten Commandments. He, uh, uh, L. Ron Hubbard expands on them a little bit, but it, it's basically uh, they they bill it as a a non sectarian moral code. They've claimed it's done things like to reduce crime in Colombia by seventy percent. It's kind of a ridiculous nonsense PR vehicle, and there's been other celebrities in the church who put their picture on it, and I think they pay the the way to happiness of royalty for it. Yeah. And it's kind of a self-serving vanity publication that makes you want to look like, they're trying to make themselves look like a humanitarian, like they care, right? Right. I find it kind of funny that uh, knowing what I know now and, and hearing what I've heard from her, uh, 
What about the part about lying to people? Uh, Milo said that they're allowed to lie to suppressive people or to people who don't believe because they're, they're less than human, basically, so you can lie to them. They're not, they're not on the same plateau as us. Kind of like the, he said it was the same thing as, uh, as what the uh, um, Islam believes, is that you can, you know, if it's a, a non, non-Islamic person, you can lie to them. And so that's what she's doing now. She's lying to everybody right now. It's a yeah, bad thing. And Milo was correct. Scientology, uh, L. Ron Hubbard had a doctrine called Acceptable Truths, which is just, uh, you know, 1984 Orwellian doublespeak. An acceptable truth means you can lie. Scientology also has um, TRs, training routines, where a PR is PR is taught to effectively outflow false truths or lies, right? Right. <laughs> so, yes, yes, Scientology has what's called core stories, acceptable truths, which means you can lie if it's for the greater good of the Church of Scientology. Okay, and so the that's church what we're has been caught, here. Yeah, the Church has been caught in so many lies. But, Robbie Olson, thank you so much for coming on the show. Your story is just amazing. I appreciate your time. Well, thank you for having me, and uh, I hope uh, we can save some people and pull them out of this cult. Well, I I do too, and I I very deeply appreciate your help and giving us some insights into your very singular experience with Scientology's Joy Villa. And for Surviving Scientology Radio, this is your host, Jeffrey Augustine. Thank you for listening, and as always, we'll be in very good touch. Thank you. Hey, Robbie, thank you. This is just amazing. I'll have the podcast up in about 24 to 48. Okay, I'm going to talk to, to Tony, and we'll, I'll disseminate it widely. Thank you so much for your time, Robbie. Look forward to meeting you in L.A. I'd like to take you to dinner when you're in town. Okay, sounds great. Thank you, 